Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, April 5. Government is moving to cut the numbers of domestic homicides recorded on the island. Domestic violence accounts for 30% of Jamaica's murder cases, but the Jamaica Constabulary Force is partnering with Woman Inc. to reduce those numbers. On Monday, they launched a domestic, sexual and gender-based violence project to train police personnel and other stakeholders to recognize their role in protecting victims of rape, sexual harassment and domestic violence. It is our expectation that this project will further equip and empower our police personnel to be more effective in dealing with this type of crime and to apprehend and secure the conviction of those who are guilty of these offenses. The project is being funded by the British High Commission and the United States Embassy. As the island celebrates Farmers Month in April, Portfolio Minister Carl Samuda is urging producers to improve product quality to stem imports. We have to take charge of our own destiny. We have to start to encourage our local people to produce efficiently, competitively, so that we don't have to rely on other people abroad to buy goods from. Minister Samuda was speaking Sunday at the launch of the 33rd anniversary of Farmers Month. He also called on the church to play a more active role in pushing young people into farming, which he believes will reduce violence. Use your efforts, your energies to encourage more young people to participate in a real way in the building of this great country of ours known as Jamaica. And if we're doing better, it means more people are employed. And if more young people are employed, they will find less time to get themselves in trouble. The national diaspora policy is currently being reviewed with a view to implement it as soon as possible. That's the word from Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith. She was speaking recently at the Jamaica Diaspora Second Advancement in Education Summit. Mrs. Johnson-Smith said the policy was important in providing the framework and climate to ensure effective engagement and partnership between Jamaica and its diaspora. The policy will aim to build an environment of trust and cooperation between the diaspora and Jamaica and among diaspora groups in host countries. It will be geared at promoting the involvement of the Jamaican diaspora in enhancing Jamaica's image and profile worldwide and create an enabling environment which stipulate, simulates the diaspora's involvement in economic growth and the social development of our nation. It is estimated that the Jamaican diaspora is made up of more than 3 million people. Meanwhile, at the Diaspora Education Summit, Education Minister Senator Ruel Reed said the Early Childhood Commission was on an accelerated drive to increase the number of certified early childhood institutions on the island. This is partly to address the low number of basic schools that have so far reached the certification standard. One of the hindrances to achieving certification status is a standard of the physical facilities, the school plans. The National Education Trust, um, which the institution and government has set up to assist in garnering resources and support for investment in education, will continue to partner in this regard. And finally, Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett is in the United States where he's conducting stakeholder meetings with key partners. Minister Bartlett's first stop will be at the Jamaica Tourist Board's advertising agency in New York and New Jersey. The trip is the latest in a series of stakeholder meetings that the newly appointed Tourism Minister has conducted since taking office last month. Already, he has met with key tourism groups including the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, Red Cap Porters Association, leaders of the attractions and ground transportation subsectors, and employees of the ministry and its agencies across the island. Minister Bartlett left the island on Monday and returns this Friday. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thank you for watching.